introduction um, about myself. My name is Rini, I'm 21 this year. Um, when I was first diagnosed with dyslexia, I was actually in primary five. My, I did not have, um, sorry, I did not have any problems actually, you know, in, when I was in kindergarten. So my parents did not think that there was anything wrong with me. Yeah, yeah so um, I was studying normally, you know, like we were just doing um, spelling and my teachers thought that I was doing really, really well in kindergarten. So they were giving me difficult words, you know, learning how to spell diarrhea when I was in kindergarten, you know. So when, we, when I went on to primary school, it was um, a real shocker that to my parents that I couldn't even spell my name. Yeah, so my, my name, um, hold on. Okay. My full name is Tan Guan Ling Rini Kuswanti. So it's a rather long name and it took me um, till I was in, sorry, primary six when I did my PSLE where we had to write all our names down. Then it, did I actually learn how to spell my name in full. So during that time, my parents thought that there was something really wrong and so they sent me to specialists, psychologists and spent thousands and thousands of dollars um, just trying to figure out what's wrong with their daughter. You know, because I've always struggled with math and I've st always struggled with um, English in terms of reading. So my father had to take a ruler and he had to bring the, the rulers down as, as I read in a book, especially in a text where it's really full and small. So that was one of the struggles that I had. And um, it's be, my, my parents were really a great um, source of inspiration also for me because not only were they so accepting to what I was facing and the challenges that I had, but they fully embraced it. And, they, they picked out my strengths and not only did not, not focus on my weaknesses, but they took my weaknesses and tried to see <clears throat> um, the kind of strengths that they can actually bring out through my weaknesses as well. So when I was in um, primary school, in primary five, I was very lucky, as not compared to you know, many of um, our students in Singapore, some of us do not get the opportunity but I was in um, Raffles Girls Primary School and I had a really good principal. So the principal helped me um, contact DS and that was the first point of contact that I had with DS and to get the initial diagnosis down. So there was a psychologist who came down to my school and actually helped me um, with it. Sorry, the slides took a while. So I moved on to um, do my N and O levels in St. Margaret Secondary. So uh, um, I was a normal acad student, and you know, in a growing up in a in, in a family where all my cousins are doing really well, all of them are in Express, it was a bummer to me that I had to do I had to take an extra year <clears throat> to finish my O levels. But my parents thought of it as an opportunity for me to actually excel much further which I did, and I'm really thankful for that one extra year I had to study because um, I graduated with an eight, eight pointer for my O levels and my N level as well. So it was really, really great. And um, during that time, my parents would always tell me, Rini, you know that you know, your friends might take one or two hours to understand a concept, but you will, you will take about five hours, six hours, it, it, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you do understand that concept as well. And you might actually understand it much further and much deeper than your friends would have had because you have spent more time on it. And so I, I just embraced that concept of me having to spend more time on certain things. And during my years in secondary school, um, you know, studying economics and studying geography and things like that, it's not it's not easy at all. So, you know, with my parents' perseverance, we, I managed to um, score the highest for in my level, which was 
which was really an achievement. And that actually led me to attend um, Polytechnic. And I did a degree, uh, sorry, a, a diploma in international business. So, you know, being able to be being able to be independent in its sense, in, in not only in my learning, but um, as a person as well, was it was really a great achievement because during my years of growing up, my mom never did let me take um, the public transport. I've never taken the public transport till I was in poly. Yeah, because I would get lost. I would not recognize roads. I would not recognize buildings. You know, so every time when I go to Orchard Road, my mom would have to tell me, um, can you wait for me at Tang? So, which, what is Tang? You know, the building that looks like a temple. I'm like, okay, so I'll go there. You know, so I, it was a different way of communication. You know, things, the way that I remember things is very different from others. And people do not understand that. But, you know, instead of, you know, scolding myself and being like angry with myself for being different, um, I always thought that being different was actually being special. So that actually helped me a lot. This was my final year project in um, Diploma. This was my team. And I managed to lead a team of boys and one girl, which was, was really, really an achievement. Yeah, so that was something that I really enjoyed doing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very good um, sense of achievement to myself. And it actually helped me gain a lot of um, respect with, amongst my peers and myself as well, because I know that I can do it. And parents, um, I would like to encourage you to encourage your children to do things that they enjoy. It's because of um, outlets that I've been learning ballet since I was three years old. So because I was able to engage in activities that helped me bring up my self-esteem, such as ballet, you know, dancing with my friends, and actually taking part in um, concerts, yeah, not only focusing on my academics, it actually helped me a lot in, in growing up as well. Um, in terms of as a person and, you know, helping me see things from a different perspective. Well, I did have ups and downs in my growing up years, in my teenage years, and um, I was rebellious as well at one point of time. So I actually did join a skate club. You know, so we were all skating and we were like looking rough, but all these are my girlfriends from secondary school, so we we're all girls. Yeah. And you know, we were just enjoying ourselves and we thought that hey, you know, it's it's it doesn't matter, it doesn't it's no no fault of ours to want to be cool, right? And so my parents did struggle a lot on that and because I was so dyslexic, you know, the way I think sometimes it's it's very difficult for parents to perceive, like, why would my daughter be wanting to do things like this? Why is she painting her nails black all the time, you know? But um, thankfully, it was just a phase. And yes, my parents always say that it's just a phase. So I am no longer skating, but it was fun. And, you know, it's through this, these activities that, you know, allowing us or my parents who allowed me to go through that I know the different um, faces of life, the different parts of Singapore, you know, the different parts of life that, that um, we do not actually see. So like more of the underground scenes or actually looking into, you know, like uh, challenging the norms, challenging ourselves and challenging what's right and what's wrong. It's through these challenging, um, challenging our parents that we actually, uh, actually grew up a lot and actually learned a lot about myself. And after I got tired of it, you know, and I grew up, and I knew that, you know, my parents are always right, and they are always right, that um, it's time for me to come back, it's time for me to be serious with my life. And without the ups and downs that my parents allowed me to enjoy and to actually experience, I would not be able to have achieved as much as I have. Yeah, in terms of academic, and as well as the level of thought and maturity, I think and I hope I do have now. So with that, um, I would like to thank all the parents, especially parents, thank you so much for coming because your presence being here actually just tells volumes of your dedication, your love and your acceptance towards your children and your condition because we're not hopeless. There's nothing wrong with us. We just need to see it from a different point of view. And um, parents who are accepting 
once parents accept their, their children's disabilities or even being a dyslexic, you know, that is actually a great step for your child's improvement and as well as, you know, our upbringing. So, um, yeah, I would just like to thank, thank you so much parents for coming today.